Hello everyone, I am The Dude. Welcome back to my YouTube channel, and today we are talking about a newly developed tropical depression, Tropical Depression 28, I believe, that is developing in the Caribbean. To find out more, stay tuned and enjoy. If you'd like staying up to date with the latest weather forecasts and updates, then please consider hitting the subscribe button below. Let's see how fast we can get to 2,000 subscribers. Also, to help this video's performance very much, please consider clicking the like button and sharing this video with your friends. Also, please consider watching the whole video. Thank you. Now let's get on with today's video. And I do apologize because the other day I actually did have a video set up um, i actually had done a video i recorded and everything about uh the winter about the winter weather in the north and for some reason youtube was just giving me a lot of trouble about uploading it for some reason like it wasn't letting me upload it was never processing it and i did have another video plan for yesterday but today i was planning on talking about the snowstorms but since we have newly developing tropical depression 20 i figured we'd talk about that uh today so okay, tropical depression 28 here it is in the northern caribbean and it is forecast to develop into a tropical storm actually during the day on sunday i right, not expected before that but it could still if it it isn't a good environment as of right now so it could develop late tonight but there are tropical storm watches out for the western part of cuba this will also likely track uh, just near if not right over cancun which was actually devastated by category 2 hurricane delta not that long ago it is expected to develop into a hurricane once it like as soon as it enters the gulf but because of um, some uncertain development conditions in the central northern Gulf, it may weaken to a moderate tropical storm before landfall. But it, still, a strong, moderate to strong tropical storm versus a weak Cat 1 hurricane is really no difference, as I always say. So maximum sustained winds right now are 30 miles per hour, typical for a tropical depression. It's only moving north-northwest at 2 miles an hour. So really, it's not in a, any hurry to develop, and it may not enter the Gulf of Mexico until Tuesday morning. So this has, I mean, this is almost the entire day, Sunday and Monday, in a good developing environment. Because once it enters the Gulf, some, it will have some trouble developing. All right, so I'll be talking about that in today's video as well. Here we have the probability for tropical storm force winds. There's really no 100% probability for anybody yet. The highest probability I see on here is 40 to 50. And that's because it hasn't officially developed into a TS yet at all. All right, so there's no, like, purple areas yet. Right, but once it does because that once this does become a tropical storm, you'll see like there'll be like 80, 90, 100 percent chances of tropical storm force winds for whoever it may trap. But because it's not a tropical storm yet, the probabilities are a bit low. But for the Texas coast all the way to the Florida coast, you are in this cone for right now. Obviously, the cone is big right now as it approaches the Gulf Coast. The cone will get smaller. But as of right now, Texas between Texas and Florida coast, the entire northern Gulf Coast needs to be on alert here, as well as especially. Uh, western cuba and also the northern yucatan peninsula because you guys are like in line for it first all right so keep that in mind all right so here we have the interactive map which will basically tell us exactly how strong the storm will get not just whether if it's a storm or a hurricane all right so here we go this enter as soon as it enters the gulf 65 mile an hour tropical storm but it could become a 75 mile power category one hurricane which is like bare minimum at 2 p.m on tuesday october 27th am i right yeah october 27th is a tuesday and with wind gusts up to 90 miles per hour. But as it nears the coast, um, because of some slightly cooler waters, and also, um, I don't think the water will be as big of an issue, although water temperatures will be cooling and we'll lose some of that heat content, but the wind shear will get pretty bad as well. So 65 mile an hour tropical storm by this point, with winds gusting to 75 miles per hour. But remember, sustained winds need to be 75 for it to be a hurricane. All right, and then once it moves inland through eastern Tennessee, the winds drop to like 30 miles per hour with winds gusting to 40 after that point. All right, and there actually are some other maps released for this because of how close it is to the U.S. So we do have some rainfall maps out for it as well. So three key messages here. One, it is forecast to strengthen into a tropical storm on Sunday. And again, tropical storm watch is issued uh, for Western Cuba. But tropical storm conditions are possible for both Western Cuba and Northern Yucatan Peninsula. So I think shortly, maybe in the 8, or 8 p.m. update or the 11 p.m. update, probably a tropical storm watch will be added for uh, Northern Yucatan Peninsula. And through Wednesday, our right, heavy rainfall for Cuba, Western Cuba, the Cayman Islands, Jamaica, uh, Yucatan Peninsula, and eventually Florida. With Southern Florida is getting the, some of it right now. All right. So they are getting, Southern Florida is getting some rainfall. Uh, that could be just enhanced from the moisture from the system, but that's only going to add moisture um, to the, it's going to add moisture to the atmosphere 
for Florida, which isn't good because they've been getting a lot of rainfall recently, especially with the recent King Tides have been going on. It's not good. Um, and the system will be forecast to approach the northern Gulf Coast on Wednesday, and you could see some rain and surge and even some wind. Again, it, it says from Louisiana to the Florida Panhandle, but really it's anywhere from Texas to Florida at this point. It's a wide range of where it could possibly go. All right, so let's check out the rainfall. Now, the rainfall map is only for Florida right now because that's where it's really hitting right now. But for Western Cuba, they're actually calling for two to four with some spotty four to six. But for Florida, um, I do see especially um, points south of Miami Homestead, like around the uh, around the islands in Florida, like Key West, four to six widespread with some isolated totals right around Marathon. All right, maybe upwards of six to ten inches of rainfall. All right. And then throughout other portions of southern Florida, like like Miami and just north of Miami, maybe like Fort Lauderdale, probably two to four inches. But but definitely a lot of areas could get four to six uh, on the in Key West, all right. And then some local six to ten is like the highest amount. So flash flood risk. Okay, this is today, as you can see on the right here. This is today, and that is tomorrow. But through Tuesday morning, the risk probably will go away as this moves into the Gulf, and then probably moving closer to the Gulf Coast by this point. So again, here's the same cone just uh, by the Weather Channel. As you can see, entering as a hurricane. But like I said, we do the cone actually goes right on the Texas-Louisiana border. And the easternmost point is like the Florida coast. So this could go right now. New Orleans is actually right in the center of that cone. So they could get hit yet again. All right? Especially with all the, like, between, you know, Laura and other systems. It's not good for New Orleans and Delta as well. So, again, forecast to make landfall as a moderate tropical storm right now. Between 60 and 65 mile per hour sustained winds is the current forecast. Uh, again, winds are 30 miles per hour right now. Winds gusting to 40. Pressure is actually 10.05 millibars is when I last checked, which is the latest. All right. So that's the current wind and pressure. And you can see this on satellite. Honestly, it does not look too bad. All right. We're definitely starting to see. Uh, I think it's protected right now because there's an upper level high, not low level, obviously, because that's where the storm is. Uh, surface low, upper level high is definitely keeping the wind shear low. It's keeping the atmosphere warm. And we're definitely seeing a rotation here. With definitely some thunderstorms starting to flare up on the northern and western side. All right. But eventually this will become eastern, north, eastern, and eastern loaded like a tropical system should become. As you can see, it's already started to develop convection out to its east. Uh, sea surface temperatures are currently actually, even though they're actually cooler in the northern Gulf Coast, they're still actually above average for this time of year, which is actually pretty cool. Or it's pretty unusual. As you can see, much of the Gulf of Mexico is still above 80 degree waters. That doesn't necessarily mean that there's a lot of heat content. That's just saying the sea surface temperature. We'll actually look at the heat content as well. But the but like our like the coastline of the northern Gulf Coast, we most areas are around 78 or so degrees Fahrenheit, which is still pretty warm, but not quite enough to really get that development support. All right, so we have our current low position, which is basically around 83 degrees west and about 18 and a half degrees north. Those are your coordinates. Now for the storm track. All right, when a storm is pretty much at its landfall point, track doesn't really matter. But for right now, track does matter because it's uncertain as to where it could go. Honestly, the models do not agree much. I think they come together maybe on a landfall, like like as it's coming on on its landfall. But for a short-term track, like I see like three or four models bringing it over Cancun. I see three or four models bringing it this way. And I see another three or five models bringing it this way. So really, for the next three, four days, the track looks pretty uncertain, but the models do seem to agree between anywhere between New Orleans and and maybe the western Florida coastline on a landfall, maybe like Mississippi, Alabama. They do seem to agree on a, on a general landfall point, and then they actually do agree long-term, which is pretty weird. Usually they agree short-term and not long-term, uh, and then the track goes right over the Appalachian Mountains through the mid-Atlantic of the, of the eastern United States. Uh, that was the sorry, other model tracks. This is the GEFS model tracks. All right. And also, they actually do agree more so short term and like up until landfall point and then after landfall, they kind of disagree. But as long as they are like, we want to know where it's going to make landfall. I think that's what really matters. And you can see they have it actually bringing it a bit farther west, maybe central and eastern Louisiana, maybe Mississippi and Alabama is probably like the furthest east point. All right. Maybe a couple miles bringing in the Florida as well. But I think this is shifted a bit farther west. Which does mean this is going to spend more time over water. Now, we usually say that when a tropical system spends more time over water, it gets more chances to develop, right? That's true. However, if it's spending over time, if it's spending, if a tropical system is spending more time over water and the conditions over that said area of water are not good for development, maybe the storm spending time over water is actually bad for it. So it all depends. If the development conditions were like 100% okay for, in the Gulf of Mexico, then yes, the longer it stays in the water, the more it develops. But in this case, 
because the Northern Gulf isn't isn't that good for development right now, this may actually hurt the system long term. So GEPS model tracks, now these are really all over the place. I mean, you got some models bringing it all the way into the Bay of Campeche in the western or southwestern Gulf of Mexico, and others are bringing it to like Florida. So this is really definitely divided, but the black line does give you a general idea, like in the middle point, but these set these set models are really all over the place. And as for the intensity guidance, only two models actually do make it a category one hurricane. Most actually uh, we, we definitely see a few becoming a moderate tropical storm. Most actually keep it a weak tropical storm, weak to moderate tropical storm in the long term. So here's our two models here. We have the GFS and the GEM model. So here's the GFS model. And as you can see, the storm system is located right down there. All right, right now, this is actually at 8 p.m. Then look as we move over time. Like I said, the storm center won't move actually into the Gulf until like late morning, early afternoon on Tuesday. All right, then it starts to become a bit more developed. We got, the, we got the cyclone vorticity, but look at this. We definitely also have a low big storm that's dipping down over Oklahoma and Texas, along with that gesture. And that may actually, again, raise the shear, which is not good. So that may weaken the storm. As you can see, notice how that low approaches. Notice how the storm, the tropical system, look how it's just falling apart. All right, so that's, that's kind of like the correlation there. That low that's dipping down is coming along with a jet stream, which is gonna just jack up the wind shear. And that's not good for the development of the storm system. But as of right now, it is still in a good development area. So it's got good time to develop right now. But look at the gem model. I see a bit more magentas on the map. So maybe more a stronger of a storm system as it moves through Cancun. Look at this. Then it may start to lose those magenta colors, but still try and keep them to the best of its ability. But they call for a landfall more so in central, right, right in the middle of Louisiana, kind of like where Hurricane Laura made landfall. GFS is kind of saying the storm's kind of broken apart and it's in between New Orleans and Mobile, Alabama. So gem miles a bit farther west. Now, we have our ship's diagnostic message here. And as you can see, look how high the wind shear gets in a few days, 85 knots. Now, it'll, now probably, so if today is, today is Saturday, right? I am very destroyed. All right, so we got one, two, three, four, five. So that, that's talking about Thursday. Landfall is supposed to be on Tuesday, so, or Wednesday, I should say. So this is pretty much like just after landfall. All right, and I would say anything like right here is pretty much up until landfall. So maybe if the wind shear does manage to stay low, because 34 knots, that's kind of, it's kind of being a, it, that's a bit much. All right, now, if this is like a Cat 5 hurricane, it can handle 34 knots of shear. It may weaken it a bit, but a Cat 5 hurricane can handle it. Not a small tropical system or tropical storm, a Cat 1 hurricane cannot handle that. So we will be watching that. Sea surface temperatures, again, 30 Celsius now, but like I said, pushing landfall may fall to 26, 25, all right, which would definitely put the sea surface temperatures mid to upper 70s, which is okay, but when you combine that with more shear, that's just not good. And storm speed will also be speeding up. Right now, it's only moving at a couple miles an hour. That will change. And maybe just after it makes landfall, the storm may start moving at like 30 miles an hour, which is like, like 30, 40 miles an hour. It's like Indy 500 in the hurricane world. That's like really fast. It may not seem like that to us. But notice the heat content. Heat content values will be going well above 100, all right, for a very long time. I mean, we're talking about maybe for a couple days, like as it's moving through the Northern Caribbean, Heat content will be excessively high, which is really good. But notice this, heat content falls from 100 to a few hours later, it'll only be down to 20, 30, and maybe even close to nothing once it enters the Gulf. So it's gotta get all of its energy up in the Northern Caribbean and extreme Southern Gulf of Mexico, because once it starts moving through the Gulf, I, I think its chances will start hurting a little bit. All right, so I'm gonna go through our last few maps here. This is basically talking about the dry air. There's Epsilon, the dry air is getting sucked into that right now. Bermuda did get some impacts with this. But luckily, the dryer behind it, Bermuda, is, is improving very nicely. Um, really, all that did was pretty much some surf, some waves, and some wind, some windy conditions for Bermuda, which you're used to on a day-to-day -day basis. But here is our storm system right here, Invest 95L, where really it's tropical depression 28. And there is actually some dry air on the western half of the Gulf of Mexico, eastern half, not so much. All right, So if that dryer does manage to stay around, that may hurt its development chances as well. But I think our biggest problem is the shear. Our second biggest problem, I think, is the heat content slash SSTs. And our third biggest problem is the dryer. That's how I kind of like rank it. Now, as for right now, shear is not too bad, but it could move again into an environment where shear is pretty high. Now, what I did include in this video is the shear predictions. All right, notice how shear is moderate to high. 
All right, over to Central Gulf of Mexico. This is a 24 hours. This is basically 24 hours out. So this is 8 a.m. Sunday morning. All right, and then we got 8 a.m. on Monday morning. Notice how the shear falls from like near 70 not or 70 miles an hour all the way down to 30 miles per hour. So shear does go down a good bit by Monday morning. And by Tuesday morning, shear is even lower actually. Like the central and southern Gulf is pretty much no shear, and the northern Gulf has about 30 to 40 miles an hour of shear. All right, so shear may be falling. All right, it's at upper level high, continues to build. We can see a more peaceful environment in terms of the shear, and that would really help this thing develop. Destabilize the atmosphere, and it could be dangerous. But if that gesture gets pushed north, all that shear is staying to the north, and it doesn't impact the storm system. Obviously, we want more shear because that tears apart the hurricane, and I know I agree with you guys 100%. I am sick. I'm pretty much sick of hurricanes this year. I admit it's very fun to track them, but there's just been so much devastation between hurricanes and wildfires this year. And other things so definitely a lot of hurricanes i'm pretty sure we're all sick of at this point so stick around for updates ring that bell notification thank you guys for watching today's video i am the weather dude signing off till next time stay awesome and i'll catch you guys in the next video